In today's tutorial we're going to be making this purse and this is a felted purse just like so. The dimensions of the finishing are 10 inches but if you want to follow this pattern and decide not to want to felt the actual finish size will be 13 inches all the way where my thumb is way over here. Okay and the dimensions for if you decide not to felt um, the dimensions after felting will be about 7 inches and then before felting is about 8. That's how much shrinkage is going on in this. So whether you're comfortable with felting or not, either way this is still a great pattern. The pattern is available on my website and there's a link in the more information of this video in order to access it. To be able to felt, if you decide to felt, you need 100% wool. Okay, So this is Peyton's classic wool. It is confirmed to be 100% uh, pure new wool. So if you don't want any shrinkage or any problems with that, use acrylic and you could use the Bernat Super Value. Also, if you decide that you don't like the color uh, schemes, these are just a suggestion. On my website in the pattern, I actually tell you how many rows there are of each, but if you want to substitute for any one of these, it'd be actually, you know, it's creative choice. You can do whatever you want. Um, just know that when you're doing this kind of thing, this is actually just one line of yellow, just like you see. This is probably two, that's three, that's four. So when you're actually doing it before felting, it actually looks like it's very significant, but when it felts it, it just comes together being very cool like that. So I'm going to make a new one, and this new one is going to be much uh, a, a different color. And let's get started with this new tutorial with the felted purse. To help explain myself before we start this tutorial is that the bottom of the bag is actually round just like so, and there's actually pivot points to how the circle will grow when it's on the bottom. And I refer to that as being called ratios. Okay, so every time you rotate, you need to put more stitches in in order to compensate because it's like a spider web and it's getting further and further apart. So in the very uh, start that we have, as I say, it's a one to two ratio. That means that there's one single crochet and then the next one is going to get two single crochets into the same stitch. Okay, the next one will be two single crochets in a row and then the next one is going to be two single crochets into the same hole. Three single crochets in a row and there will be in the next one there will be two okay so I always say this is like a ratio and with this particular one we go all the way to 15 so you'll end up with 15 single crochets in a row and then two and then we start building up if you want your bag to be much bigger then you could just continue with along with that so then you can go 16 to 2 17 18 19 20 and carry on with like that so let's get started on the beginning of this tutorial to begin this tutorial, I'm going to be using a bamboo hook today. It is a size 6 millimeter, and this is a size J. Okay, so we're going to be using that. We're going to be obviously using the Peyton's Classic Wool in order to do it, because I do want to felt this in the end. But again, don't be afraid to substitute it uh, for acrylic yarn if you wish. So let's uh, begin with the slip knot. And what I need you to do is that I need you to chain two. So one and two then what we have to do is then go uh, 11 single crochets right into the start of this chain so single crochet so just pop your hook into the beginning chain and just single crochet as normal so that was one and we have to do that 11 times two three so you'll be noticing the the straggler there I want to make sure that stays on top so it traps it into position four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Okay, and we can do that. And now I just need you to slip stitch uh, with this particular one as we go. With this tutorial, we're also going to need um, an actual um, a stitch marker and the marker is just going to go into position so we know when we've rotated all the way around. With this particular um, pattern what we're going to be doing is we're no longer going to be doing any kind of slip stitching where you end up with a line that's pretty godly so we're going to not do that going into the future. So this is let's move on to your next step. This will be moving on to row number two when you're looking at the instructions that I provided. In row number two it says to chain one so let's chain one and the next one is going to get one single crochet okay so this is a one to two ratio the next one will get two single crochets into the same hole one and two okay and the next one is going to get one the next one is going to get two 
I hopefully you understand the ratios. I think I confuse a lot of people with that. It's just my own way of thinking about it, and it makes sense in my own brain. Okay, the next one is going to get 2. And 2. And then the next one is going to get 1. And the next one is going to get 2. Okay, the next one is going to get 1. And it doesn't really matter where you end up with around the end, like it does with the beanie. The last one is going to get two. Okay. And so what I want you to do is that I don't want to be slip stitching at all, so I'm just going to leave my marker there, where I just finished, and we'll move on to your next level. So we're just going to continue to work in a continuous spiral as we work our way around. So we're going to begin a two to two ratio. So the first two single crochets, the first two stitches will have one single crochet each. Okay, so that's the first part of the ratio. That's two. Okay, and then the next one is going to get two. Okay, so one and two. Okay, so the next two single crochets are going to go in. So one, and then we go to the next stitch for two. And then the next one after that is going to get two inside. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so we're going to put one single crochet into the next two, which is the two part of the ratio, and the, the next one is going to get two. And continue that all the way around. We'll meet back up where we'll move along. As we move along, we're now at the end, and I actually fin I finished with a single crochet, so I didn't finish on a double like I would have the beanie because we're not slip stitching. But every time we want to pass this stitch marker, we want to make sure we move it up the level so that we understand where the stop and start is. So moving on to level number, um, what do we got here? We got level number four, okay, and we're going to be doing a three to two ratio. So we're going to put th one double our single crochet into the next and the next and the next. So for three in a row, and then the fourth one is going to get the two. Okay, so we have one single crochet, one single crochet, one single crochet, and then we put in two. And this allows the circle to grow uh, consistency consistently. Sorry, so one two and three so there's your three and then with the next one we'll get two and continue that all the way around we'll meet back up we'll continue along okay so we're going to remove out the stitch marker again and put in so we're going to do now a four to two ratio so that was considered one so let's move that put it back that in so that was one two three and so there's four single crochets in a row, and then the next one is going to get two. One and two. Okay, so this is a four to two. So one, two, three, four, and the next one gets two. And continue that all the way around, and we'll meet back up again. Okay, so now we're going to move up again, and I don't need to go and do this all 15 times with you, but I'm going to do now the five to two ratio. Okay, so this is one. I'm going to put the slip stitch back in. Okay, and then we're going to do five. So that was considered one already. Two, three, four, and five. Okay, and then the next one will get two. So one and two. So I don't think I need to continue to do that with you. I want you to do this if you're looking at the instructions. Do this until you get to the ratio of 15 to 2 and finish 15 to 2 where we'll bring it back up together and uh, we'll get to that. It'll be a little bit before you'll meet me back at that point, um, but I have to do that off camera as well to be caught up to you as well. So we'll meet back up where you'll have 15 to 2 done and continue to What do you're it. seeing here is another project that I'm working on and I'm making my bag much bigger as I want it to be a bigger handbag so I've gone to a 25 to 2 ratio and now I'm going to grow it up on the sides in order to uh, make this even more larger. Now just like the hats that we did the other day is that when you stop growing the hat so let's say for example this is where we're growing it and then we stop the hat still grows even though we're not adding any more stitches so let's turn this upside down so this is where we are 
Okay, so even though I'm no longer growing the hat or the this bag, it's still going to grow bigger and bigger for the next few revolutions. What I found with that is that when you had this color here, this is where I changed colors off when I originally did the bag, and I find because it grows up like this, this color kind of disappears underneath the bag. And it could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing, it all depends on to you. So what I'm going to do for this is that I'm going to continue to maintain the same color for a little bit longer as it catches up to the growing and then it will eventually start going up like a cylinder all the way up. So you can refer to the more information of this video in order for more clarification on the pattern that you will see when it comes to doing this pattern and other patterns available. Looking more carefully at this bag, by the time you have just stopped growing the material at the base of this bag and then start it working away you will have gone from 59 rounds all the way up it's hard to believe that there's 59 rows in between here but if you look at the before picture of this bag you will see that it's much bigger that the actual length shrunk by three inches so you're going to put it through the felting process once you're done and I actually had to felt this twice I had a front loader washer and I had to felt that twice and you just use two tablespoons of baking soda, use hot water in the washing machine with the cold water rinse and an old pair of jeans and make sure that it is an old pair so that you don't have any kind of running issues um, and you don't wreck any uh, pairs of jeans. So now we want to concentrate on making the handle. The handle is actually just one piece of material. okay? And this has actually been done through the embellish knit just like so. And we've used that in a tutorial before. And what I've done is I've actually created a few of these strands. And it only takes maybe about five minutes to create a strand, maybe not even that much time. And the strands I created were about five feet long. Okay, And so I just created random colors because I re really wasn't sure at the end what colors I would do. And then I also felted these at the same time. So you could do everything at one time, do the whole felting process at the one time and just throw it in the washing machine. So here I have the embellished knit and we've used this before in other tutorials. And this is like a spool knitting machine. So And, and so I just have to crank the handle in order for it to knit. This is not working too well, the uh, material that's on there right now. But the wool that we find, the 100% uh, classic wool by Peyton's actually works really really well and so I just did a number of these strands and I also made those at the same time as this bag so that when I felted I just threw this in the washing machine as well. It does have kind of some weird bends on it and that's the reason I had it all braided up uh, when I threw it in the washing machine because I was planning on braiding it uh, when it went on to the bag but then I changed my mind afterward. So I would recommend next time I was to do this is not braid anything just throw it in the washing machine uh, as is and then braid it afterwards so that's a kind of an inside tip. What you're seeing here is just one string or one piece of material and basically it comes down okay through the bag okay and then back out and then tied okay so this one side of the string and then comes along down through the bag back over and then tying it shut so how did i get these particular holes inside basically i just got a size 10 millimeter um, knitting needle just like so and I just rammed it through a section of it so I was what I did is I actually folded it just down like this so let's move these out of the way I actually folded it like this and I began to push through the knitting needle so that I actually had all the pieces so I did one and you have to be very careful with this because this is um, actual um, felt it, it's very, very tight. So you just take your time pushing it through, then you get the next piece, and the next piece, and the next piece, and that's how I did that. I didn't really want to cut the felt, I didn't trust it, so what I just did is by just ramming this through, it actually just separates the felt out instead of actually having to cut anything. And that's how I was able to do this quick little bag. So this took about six hours to crochet in total. Um, some people online right now are complaining about the cost of the, the wool versus other materials. Um, you, for the amount of yarn that I used in here, there's six different colors, um, it was about $60, but I can get three and a half bags out of that particular whole lot of yarn. So I'm thinking to myself that's not a bad deal if you're looking for a Christmas present because this works out to be under $20 when you look at the costs associated to making a bag just like so. So until next time, it's Mikey on behalf of allfreecrochet.com.